Hi, everybody. Hi. So today we're broadcasting from Best Holy World and the beautiful Ray Lushkin, the winning adventure, is talking today, the healed heart. And, you know, earlier we talked about, I talked about letting go. And so we're letting go of our idea of what we were, we're going to talk about and we're moving straight into miracle. That's right. That's right. Because we all deserve miracles and we are miracles. We are a, a beloved creation of the creator. And so, but when we're in that state of pain and, and woundedness, we don't feel it at all. We, we just like, I'm worthless. I'm broken. I'm, I don't have what it takes. And that's not the truth of who you are. No, I always just like to say just, you know, for me, if there's ever a moment, it's just to, I always look at my hands. I start with my hands and I remember, you know what? I didn't do anything to get these hands, right? I didn't do anything to get this body, right? I just received it. So I, as much as science wants to tell me about how my body works, nobody really has any real idea. Right. I mean, that's, I, a, that's a miracle. Right. And I wake up in the morning and, and, and I wrote that, you know, in my journal today. I'm so blessed. I woke up. My heart's beating. My, I, I'm breathing. I didn't do anything to do that. You know, it just is a miracle because you, you don't know when your time on earth is over. And so I'm just looking at me, my body, and everything that surrounds me is this gorgeous miracle. And so, um, so I, I would like everybody to take out their journal today. And you're going to draw a star, you know, one, two, three, four, five pointed star. And make it as big or as small as you, well, I'd like it bigger than smaller. And then you're going to listen as I read this portion of a beautiful book called, uh, by Agmandino, The Greatest Miracle. And I want you to sit and close your eyes and just take it in. And uh, it'll take a couple minutes, but you, I know this poem just touches me in so many ways, and I'm sure that it will help everybody who's on this call. Today is your birthday. This is your new date of birth. Your first life. Like a play in a theater was only a rehearsal. This time the curtain is up. This time the world watches and waits to applaud. This time you will not fail. Light your candles. Share your cake. Pour the wine. You have been reborn. Like a butterfly from its chrysalis, you will fly. Fly as high as you wish. And nothing will obstruct your mission or your search for the true riches of life. Let me share with you again the secret you heard at your birth. And forget, you are the greatest miracle. You are my greatest miracle. Let us take an inventory of the miracle that you are. Let us take inventory of your blessings. First, you have eyes to see. You have the ability to enjoy a snowflake, an eagle, a child, a rainbow, and the look of love. Count one blessing you can hear. Your ears hear the wind in the trees, children at play, and the words, I love you. Count another blessing you can speak. No other creature has words to calm the angry, warm, and lonely. Encourage the defeated and say, I love you. Count another blessing. You can move. You are not a tree contemned to a small plot. You can stretch, run, dance, and work. Count another blessing. You can give and receive love. For you know what to receive love. It must be given with no thought of its return. To love unselfishly is in its own reward. And should love not be returned, it is not lost. Count another blessing. Your heart is strong. It beats hour after hour, day and night, and year after year. Man has never created such a machine. Count another blessing. And your brain. Your brain is the most complex structure in the universe. You can file away every perception, sound, taste, smell, every action you have ever experienced. Are you poor? No, you are.
of the earth. Never in all the 70 billion humans who have walked this planet since the beginning of time has there been exactly anyone like you. Never until the end of time will there be another such as you. You have shown no knowledge or appreciation of your uniqueness, yet you are the rarest thing in the world. You have valued yourself in pennies when you were worth a king's ransom. Why did you listen to those who demeaned you? And far worse, why did you believe them? Do not hide your rarity any longer. Bring it forth. Show the world. Imitate no one. Be yourself. Show your rarity to the world, and they will shower you with gold. This is the second law. Proclaim your rarity. And now you've received two laws of success and happiness. Count your blessings. Proclaim your rarity. I'm going to pause here because there's more, but I think there's so much rich. On your, on, your, on your star and say, what are the blessings? What are your blessings? So you're reminded and you have it. And it doesn't have to be this list, but I want you to think about what are you grateful for? Everybody can do that. And even in your, in your pain, you know, if, you're, if your body's hurting, think about that one finger that's not hurting. You know, if you're physically in pain, there's got to be one thing that you can do, whether it's your tongue and you can still taste the food. You know, little things like that, we, we tend to forget that. Yeah, gratitude is such a big one, and there's always one little aspect that we can, as you say, I love that way. You, if it's just your tongue, you can taste your food. And do, do, I, I'm thinking of that lovely gentleman, um, Nick, from Australia, right? That Have you seen him in his conversations? He has... Basically, he has no arms and, and legs. Oh, right, right, right. And seeing him and he just says, you know what, he could have just laid there his whole life and said, I can never get up. Right. And his part of his whole thing is just he puts himself down on the ground and says, this is what I have to do to get up, just to be upright. And, you know, it's like the intention of just practicing something and enjoying the journey of doing it and just realizing that that's when you point your ship in that direction, things work out for you. I couldn't imagine having, you know, to overcome such a situation, but it's somebody like him or, um, there's somebody else who talked about tying their shoes and, and it took them 10 years to learn to tie their shoes. But that was a miracle. That was a good miracle. So what is the miracle? Because we've all experienced a miracle at some point in our lives and we, we don't notice it. We don't say it. But what is that miracle? You know, I mean, I think about uh, I could have died at any point and given up on life and said, you know, life's too hard. And yet here I am. And I have these beautiful children and grandchildren. And, you know, I wanted to kill myself, uh, you know, and it's like, what was it about me that I, you know, I didn't give into that, you know, I didn't give into that impulse to kill myself. So what is your miracle? Because we all have them. And I, I think, you know, just like we're talking about those people, Amy Purdy. I mean, if you have not seen her um, TED talk, you know, you have to, you know, she, she was this Olympian. She was this major athlete and she got sick and she had to, and her legs were amputated and she thought, you know, I got to do something. And now she is won, you know, medals with, with, and created her own legs. She, she, she never knew she could be a designer, but she was so disappointed with the legs that she received these lumps. And she said, no, 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 I am going to create from what I've got. And she found people to help her create these so she has a whole, um, you know, array of legs for what she wants to do. If she's running, if she's skiing, if she's doing, if she's walking, if she's dancing. She wants dancing with the stars. You know, who would have thunk? But that's the miracle. So it's about taking what you've been given and what can we do with it. And that becomes a miracle if we allow it to be. Yeah, and I think that's so much of what's going on in the world. There's so many people that have chosen in the sense to have these situations to empower us to realize that we are much more than this physical appearance and there are many answers to our situation, many miracles that can occur when we open ourselves up and believe that yeah, there is a way. Like who, you know, until people, it's like the four minute mile, until Bannister did the four minute mile and then everybody happened until somebody actually says, you know what, I was able to overcome this situation, right? I think back in artificial limbs, you know, we're just so, you know, if you were lucky to get one, 
when I was growing up. Now you can have multiple. Right, or an artificial heart when they took a big tin thing and put it in somebody's heart. And now, you know, it's small, it's unique. And, you know, all the, the advances that we have had, you know, just the idea of flight. You know, Leonardo da Vinci had, you know, year, you know, in his time, imagine flight, but he couldn't make it happen. Then you had the Wright brothers. These are miracles. That the it is available to us if we open up ourselves to the miracles that surround us. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and read a little bit more. So okay. Um, next is the third law, the secret that will produce riches and acclaim beyond your dreams. Go another mile. The only certain means of success is to render more and better service than is expected of you, no matter what your task may be. That is a habit by, followed by all successful people since the beginning of time. Therefore, the surest way to, to doom yourself to mediocrity is to perform only the work for which you're paid. For there is a pendulum to all life. And the sweat you deliver, if not rewarded today, will swing back tomorrow tenfold. Go another mile. You cannot command success. You can only deserve it. And now you know the great secret necessary in order to merit reward. Three laws of success. Count your blessings. Proclaim your rarity. Go another mile. Do not fear as you enter your new life. Now you know you are a miracle. And there is no fear in a miracle. Be proud. You are not momentary whim of the careless creator experimenting in the laboratory of life. You were made with a purpose. For how could one improve on a miracle? You are a marvel to behold. You are enabled with all you need to reach your full potential. So I'm going to stop there again because two things that we will, you know, what is your rarity? What is that gift that you have that's just special to you? And we all have one. And that could be your purpose. It could be your calling or they may be, you know, just lead one to the other. So take a few moments now and really think about what is your gift. I, I know my rarity is my creativity. That's one thing. You know, I have several, but that not everybody is creative and a big picture thinker like I am and consensualize, you know, um, you know, your vision and really see for you three years in the future. That's what is part of my rarity. What about you? Oh, I would say one of the things that I hear more about is communicating that I have so many different analogies that come to me to make it very common sense for people to get. Uh, so there's that element of just making it straightforward. I just feel like if you're really the people that are watching, if they're feeling so disconnected or broken that what it could actually be your gift could actually be something that you think is your pain. Right. There are many people that were told, you know, quit being funny. Right. Stop being the, you know, the 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 character that is disruptive. But it was a, co a comedic force. And that was really their gift. But yet when they were growing up, they didn't feel that that was the gift. That's what they were ostracized for. Right. So sometimes where you may may be your gift is what you've been told previously is not your gift right, right. So look at that because you know I know growing up lots of times it was like do you have to talk so much <laughs> right 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 you have to explain everything and I'm like yeah in some cases yeah that was it was like okay I won't say anything but ultimately a lot of questions you know I would always be asking the question what where why you know, and, and that's one of my gifts today is people say, Ray, you ask great questions that lead me to the next step of my life. You are the one who's gotten me from here to here because you don't judge. You just ask questions that lead me to my own inner space and in a, in a supportive, loving way. So exactly. Those are the kinds of gifts. So, uh, you know, I would love everybody, you know, write these things down right now. But later, use your creativity and and either put together a little booklet about my gifts, you know, and you can pick up pictures, images from Pinterest and, and, and just sort of keep a little, this is my gift. You, you know, imagine yourself as a present and you are unwrapping it. Yeah. You know, here's the bow and this gorgeous wrapping paper. 
And each piece of this is a gift that you are to yourself and to the world. And so what are all the, the ingredients of that gift? What's inside of it, inside of you? So, you know, add pictures or, you know, and, and add that and write a little story around it so that it becomes, you own it. You know, you own it in a different way. And if, if you're feeling like you're starting to want to draw a gift, but you're feeling like the box is empty because you've been through so much, right? Right. Then allow yourself that opportunity to say, so if there was one thing, just like Ray said, if there's one aspect that you could say what you're grateful for, what would be in that box? And start to elaborate on how great a gift you are, because each of us are a gift. Each right. of us are special and unique in our own ways. And even if we think we know what our gifts are today, they can shift. Right. And, and if you're having trouble coming up with your gifts, ask a friend. You know, ask three people, you know, but start with, you know, this is what I appreciate about you. You're special, you know, so that it's reciprocal. Mm -hmm. And then I did that recently. I needed a little dose and I sent it, a request out to three of my friends. And what I got back was beautiful affirmations about how I've touched their lives. And sometimes you're surprised, like, really? That's what I do for you. I didn't realize that. So you're now you're starting to fill your box with all this. And, and imagine these are the things that are in there, the statements other people say about you. Because we do have trouble. We we put we have a blind spot to our own gifts oftentimes. So ask people, how do I make a difference? How have I touched your life? What do you see as my natural gifts? You know, what are what's my natural passion or talent that you've noticed that I do well, that you know, other, you know, those kinds of things or work even. You know, notice when people come to you and ask for advice. What is it about? You know, those kind of things. All of a sudden, you're going to start filling this little box with lots of goodies. And and when I was the the uh, filling your box and it as it can shift because one of the things now I'll get is people will say, well, so how is it that when I do an energy charge or an energy session, I don't seem to have the same results as when I work with you? And it's not. I am something that has grown and I believe the same thing. It's like the spark gets bigger in a flame as everybody's energy shifts. When Ray and I were hurt and, you know, wondering, are we going to, you know, continue to live? We weren't in the situation now to be talking. So many people look at, look at what's happening right now and they go, Oh, I can never be like you or how does that happen? But the reason we're here and I'm able to have this conversation is because we were where you were in various forms before. Right, you're not alone. You yeah. are not alone. We're just in a different, you know, a few steps ahead on the path. You know, if you imagine life as a path and a journey, which I do, you know, and some people do it a upward spiral, but I, you know, I it just imagine whatever it is for you that works. We've just gone through a lot of different kind of healing modalities, and that's what we're sharing with you so that you can have that healed heart. You know, there may be things that you've, that you've done that you love that have worked for you, and we'd love to know what those are. So when you, you get an opportunity, write them down for us. Share them on, you know, at the bottom of this and make comments because we want to know what else is working for you in your life. And also, I think we want to also know what, what else do you need from us? What, what are some of the topics you'd like us to cover? Um, so that's another thought. I'm going to go back and finish this poem. And, okay, because we're yeah. getting... For the end, um, now we come to the fourth law of success and happiness, the power to choose. You have complete control over your destiny. You have the power to choose. Use wisely your power of choice. Choose to love rather than hate. Choose to laugh rather than cry. Choose to create rather than destroy. Choose to persevere rather than quit. Choose to praise rather than gossip. Choose to heal rather than wound. Choose to give rather than steal. Choose to live rather than die. You are capable of great wonders. Your potential is unlimited. Never demean yourself again. Never settle for the crumbs of life. Never hide your talents from this day forward. You can choose failure and despair or success and happiness. The choice is exclusively yours. Remember the four laws of happiness and success. Count your blessings. Proclaim your rarity. Go another mile. Use wisely your power of choice. This day you have been notified. You are the greatest miracle in the world. 
this poem just speaks to my heart. Every time I've done this exercise and I've done it in many ways, you know, it's about, you know, and again, you know, part of this is that choice that, we're, you know, when we started, when we talked about art, art, the A is awareness. This mm -hmm. is a partially awareness. But then it's reach for a better thought. That's the R. So what what better thoughts can you reach for when you are in pain? And, and we're not saying discount your pain or never say that you're in pain. You know, but sometimes we have to disrupt the story we're telling ourselves or we'll never get out of it. Because if we stay in that victim mode, then there will not be the transformation that you want. You wouldn't be on this call. You wouldn't be listening to us if you didn't want transformation. Right. And, you know, so this is, you know, I I'd love you to then think about, you know, we've talked about what, you know, your feelings, what your blessings are, what makes you unique, you know, those kind of things. I'd like you to spend a moment writing when do you feel happiest? You know, what is that? That's that passion. That's that joy, you know, that we want more of. So let's start thinking for reaching for a better thought. What would that be for you? I know I've sometimes heard people say that what makes them happy is that they could just have peace or time. And then immediately they go, but I can't have that yet, or I gotta do that, right? And I would encourage you, if you have that same idea that you you feel like there's something that would bring you happiness, and then immediately you notice there's some other thought that you're you're believing, just maybe just check that thought, because you are, are you 100% certain that that's the case, right? That's the question, are you 100% certain that you cannot have happiness until you do X? Because if, if there's just a little glimmer in there, then you're creating that opening so more can come in, more gratitude, more blessings, and then you can start to see that maybe there's a different way. Because in that space between being a miracle and being a victim, we're always in that choice moment. Right, right. And, you know, ask yourself what else is possible. You know, just that, again, is another question that opens up space. You don't have to have all the answers today, but if you can start thinking about, let's say, three activities that make you happy. Maybe it's reading a book. Maybe it's walking in nature. You know, when I was just in San Diego at a conference uh, w with Ryan Eliason, and, you know, it's with all these heart-centered entrepreneurs. Well, I knew I had to find space and time for me. So every morning before I'd start my day, I'd walk along the water. I mean, this is gift to me in every way. And I took pictures of the water and the boats in the harbor. And though that brought me joy, just, and I needed to hang on to that. And at night, I'd try and take pictures of the sunset. So on either end, I found moments of just pure joy and happiness for me. And, you know, for other people, it, it could be, you know, just taking five minutes during the day to breathe deeply, you know, to quiet their minds, you know, read an uplifting book. Um, there are so many ways. So we have to make that choice that we're also going to explore that, reach for that better thought, reach for the possibility that we could be joyful again and happy. And if you don't have any idea what that could be, I suggest you start looking through magazines or on Pinterest and look for pictures that just like, oh, that makes, us, makes me smile. That's a huge start. Just if you can acknowledge that those things make me smile. That's that's happy. And you may think, well, what's the essence of that going forward? So pictures of the mountains, let's say people. This is not my dream, you know, hiking in the Himalayas. But maybe that's your dream. And you say, oh, but I'm never going to get there. So you, you, what's the essence of that? Well, Maybe I could go to the health club and try rock. You know, they have those rock walls, the climbing walls. Do something like that. Or even just put a picture of that up on your wall. and You look at it every day. So. Yeah, or even as you're just walking down a trail or in the middle of the city, you can start to imagine that you're actually walking up a mountain, right? You've got the power between here to create anything. So just because it looks this way in life does not have to look that way on the inside to you. Because really, you were already a victim. The victim already occurred. And if you're out of that situation, you might still be in that situation. But if you're out of that situation, it's already happened. So putting the focus on to say, yes, the miracle, I am a miracle, I'm alive, right? Just as Ray said, I'm alive, I have a body, I have great 
amazing qualities that work and I'm here. I have this technology. I have a home, you know, and just continue to allow yourself to imagine and dream. And the other thing you said in the very beginning, Ray, was about coloring, right? Just releasing. I mean, if you're still finding it that you're, you know, what happiness isn't coming and looking at pictures, you're still feeling a void, then grab a color that you like and just start scribbling and coloring until you can release, until you can allow that happiness to get in. Right, right. And another technique I've done for reach for a better thought is I, I use the power of affirmations, you know, and stuff. But I do it a little bit differently. I don't just write in affirmations because there'll be something like, um, yeah, I deserve a better life. And then it's like that other voice that you were talking about. It's like I draw a line down the middle. I write, I deserve a happy life. Are you full of crap? And I keep writing, I deserve a happy life. No way, Jose. And then I'll keep doing it until I've run out of that negative voice. And then it's like, oh, wow, I actually can. Because I released, at least I saw it in a different way. Because I've written it out over and over. And that's another way I release those negative thoughts. Because really, as we're becoming, like, just as your software is changing on your computer and it's constantly being upgraded, we're becoming more aware that we are a fine-tuned instrument that receives consistently. So when you're at a gathering, like, over the past few days where you had all these people, there's all these vibrations going on. So you're being bombarded by everybody thinking, oh, this is amazing and this isn't, and you know, and, and you're getting them on one level. So that's why it's it's for those that are sensitive, like so many are, it's some of those thoughts that are saying to you why you can't do it. They're maybe not even your thoughts, but you've picked up on them. So when you start to like really say, why don't I deserve this? Some of the stuff you write, you realize it's just ridiculous because it's not even like, where did you get it from? Like, why did you even choose to believe it? And it's like emptying the glass and then it can be filled with your blessings and what really does bring you happiness. It, you're a miracle. You're a miracle. This is so beautiful that you're sharing this today. I'm just, you know, again, we had talked earlier. I had one idea, and then I was like, I open up to spirit, and spirit said, this is where you need to go, you know. So I needed it, and I, I believe that when I allow that to come through, other people need to hear this as well. Too many of us go through life feeling we don't deserve happiness, that we're worthless, we're broken, and it's not true. It is not the truth of us. You are alive. You are a miracle just by being born. And that's it. And if we stay there and focus on that, I think that we can open up that path to healing, you know, that this is part of our healing journey. And uh, again, all these ideas of how you can turn pain into power, you know, pain into purpose, pain into, you know, joy, you know, and I know when you're in the pain, you don't feel like you'll ever feel that way again, that you'll laugh spontaneously, that you'll have the love that you want, that you'll feel safe. Mm -hmm. I, I recognize that. I've been where you are. So is Jacqueline. But we're here to tell you, you can get out of that space and open up to an incredibly beautiful life with loving, supportive people and fun and joy and meaningful work in the world. And, you know, that we are doing that. The life I am living is not anything I imagined at the time that I was going through, you know, my, my trauma. <laughs> this never <laughs> no and that's that's the funny thing right like when you're you're in amongst it you just it's just like oh how do you ever get out of it and so you and I and you as a who's watching your our limited thoughts our limited perceptions are very limited but the universe has unlimited so when we allow that opening then we can start to discover things and we go, oh my gosh, like I had, I had zero idea. It's like where I live, never thought I would ever live, you know, in the East Coast. Right. I always say too, like when my kids were younger, I'd say, if you're going to tell yourself a story, tell Make a story that empowers you. <laughs> right. 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 Make a good one of, you know, instead of one that's going to scare you and make you feel small and worthless, Tell yourself, I mean, write yourself a fairy tale. I've done that, too. That's one of my other activities I have people do. Once upon a time and imagine yourself. You know, you can start as a character like a Disney girl. You know, it's like I did one about being Rapunzel at one point, you know, and I was locked in this tower and with my all my limiting beliefs. But I had my paints and I would paint on the ceiling and I would do all this. And it was all about joy and happiness. And how do I work that out? And instead of waiting for Prince Charming to come get me, I figured out a way to escape and live my life, you know, in a positive way. But, you know, there's so many ways to play with this. And I think that's the other idea. 
play with healing. It doesn't have to be serious and drama and hurtful and painful that you're crying in hysterics every day. You know, there's lots of ways to heal. No, I, I do think that would be something that I'd like. To, I believe that I bought into the thought process 25, 30 years ago that I was an onion and I had to peel the layers. And I just said this recently. If I had the awareness I do now, when someone had told me that, I would have said, I no, that I do not accept because. I feel it's just like the, with technology that you can do things so fast and things are faster that maybe what was in existence 25, 30 years ago with the process of healing, it's it's not the same. So you can have an experience like that. You can, or you can have a long withdrawn one and you can spend your whole life and you can have anything in between. So it's about you convincing yourself of how healing occurs for you. We're sharing some of the things that have worked Right. That and and this whole idea to me of art, because I never ever thought I was a creative being until I realized, you know what, I'm creating my life every day. Right. So I might not be painting, but I'm I'm creating it in the world, so to speak. So we're all creative and we're all healing our own hearts. And this is the beautiful thing that's happening in the world. In order to heal it, we got to let go of all these other ideas that we don't like in the world. Right. I, I had the same experience uh, I when I would be talking about oh, it's this spiral, sometimes up, sometimes down, you know, it's not a safe world. And then I actually had one coach say to me, and why? Why can't it just be like, now you're healed. Now it's safe. Sure, stuff comes up. You'll deal with it when it comes up, but you got to shift your mindset. And it's, it is, it is, we have the ability. That is one thing we have control over. That's the mindset. So again, use that technique I was saying before about, um, it's a safe world. Write down, you know, on a piece of paper and every other thought until you can't come up with any more negatives. Just start there. And and immediately for any of you that go, well, it's not safe because this is what happened A, B, C, D. The situation is I immediately think of the New York police detective, Gavin DeBecker, who wrote the book Gift of Fear. And he said that every person that he ever interviewed that had a crime and he asked, did you ever get a sign? The answer was no. But if he waited 30 seconds and didn't say anything, they all said, oh, yeah, I noticed the porch light was on. Or I had the feeling I should leave. Or I got the thought I shouldn't go. Do, you know, there was a feeling. So many times people have a feeling, but you ignore the feeling. Right. right? Some of them were so like a hard-boiled egg, we're not even aware of what we're being told. But when you start to open the crack and say, yes, I believe that I'm always, I'm going to be protected or the world is safe, you, the paradigm shifts. Right. And you start you, to see and have new experiences. Right, right. Just little bits by little bits. You know, how many times, I mean, you know, we've been laughing about it, but I, you know, I, I want to quote, I've had this vision about dating and having a beloved in it. And, you know, I actually wrote it as a smart goal. And I said, I want 10, 10 dates by February 14th. Well, I've had three. I've got two coming up this weekend. And somebody else contacted me from this dating site. And it's like, where did this come from? It was like, I opened up the possibility because I declared it. Right. You know, I honestly declared, I really want this. And it's happening, you know, and I'm having a great time. And, and then I was like, oh, and all these men have all these aspects of me. One was, a, was an artist, a ceramicist. Then this one is this. And, you know, having discussions about being a tree hugger and all the different pieces that I always have felt and wanted in, in a relationship. And it's like, oh, I'm getting it in bits and pieces and I love it. But again, we, I had to declare this is what I was ready for and open for to believe it. You know, I made the crack you know, by, by writing a statement. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, have, have you heard Rebecca's beloved song? No. Uh -uh. Oh, you have to. Okay. So I'll, I'll have to um, get the link and post it, but she, she's got a great story. Cause that was um, it's like 15 years ago, she wrote the song or the music to the song. And it was about my beloved. And when she started to share it, people, when they were hearing the song, where things were happening, when I interviewed her on this, on this, the next day, just interviewing her, and she only sang part of the song, it was like three guys showed up in my life. And I was like, what, what was going on? And I had to go, that, that's all I did was listen to 
Oh, I want to hear that song because yeah, it's like because as she taught, it's like music, just like art. Music is like a freight train, like a faster way sometimes to let, create that opening. Right. And I wrote a I wrote a story about my beloved and I and where we're going and what we're doing and you know and, I, and it's like yes, this is this is the possibility. This is the transformation that we're talking about when yeah. you when you actually allow yourself to be aware to reach for another thought, and then this is how your life can be transformed. There are actionable steps you can take and 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 make choices because that's what it's about. You making choices and allowing them to receive it as well. Because we can be nah, stay away, you know, but this is it. Yeah. So. And that's so perfect to finish that because it's like we can reach for it and then it shows up. And so many of us go, it came in purple and I wanted it in yellow, you know, or however, instead of stepping forward and allowing the transformation to occur. Right, right. Oh, so exciting. So, I, yes, I will get that and, and post that on here, my beloved. This, and, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's perfect. Um, it's, it, you know, you guys got to understand, we have not talked about what we're doing at all. We pretty much just get on it and free, free talk. So for us, this is just, you know, our, our, our hearts speaking to each other. You know, that's really what this is. And where we lead is, you know, heart-based. So, we hope this is helping you. And again, if you have any ideas or things that you're interested in, let us know. Please, absolutely. Oh, I love talking to you. Bye. Bye. Have a great week. You too. <laughs>